center in the United States. Now, I want to share a story. I was in my eighth grade class in 1959, and during Diwali time, I was playing with the firecrackers. One of the firecrackers had did not uh, exploded, and uh, <clears throat> I took that firecracker in my hand, put a little puff of air, and it exploded on my face, and my eyes were shut. Now, uh, <clears throat> I had a third degree burn. Within 24 hours, with no eyesight, I had to contemplate my future. I had lost my parents by the age of six. No parents, no eyesight. My future was very bleak. Fortunately, with the help of the eye doctor, I was able to regain the eyesight. But that incident in 1959 left an indelible impression on me about the plight of the blind people. And a seed was planted by the guard. And in 1989, 30 years later, we started the Blind Foundation for India. And the impetus for starting the foundation was Dr. Rajendra Vyas, Honorary Secretary General of National Association for the Blind, was visiting with us. And he gave us a very simple challenge. There were 15 million blind people in India and about 1 million Asian Indians around that time here in the United States. So he motivated us to do something. So that is the uh, connection with the issue of blindness. Now let's look at the mission of the Blind Foundation for India. The mission of BFI is to prevent and cure blindness and also to provide education and rehabilitation to permanently blind people in India. Now let's look at some of the staggering statistics of blindness in India. Over 15 million blind people live in India, which accounts for one third of the world's blind population. It's a huge burden to the society in India. 2.3 million people develop cataracts due to age-related issue every year. And 2 million blind children, only 5% of them receive any education. Now, I want to explain the issue of blindness in India at two front. One at the young age, between four to six, when children do not have enough vitamin A in their diet, they go blind. Now, this is mainly due to poverty, malnutrition, uh, lack of hygiene, and lack of uh, knowledge and ignorance about the issues around uh, vitamin A. Now, we need a simple intervention of oral dose of uh, vitamin A given to the child between the age of four to six, five times, and each dose costs only 20 cents US, and five doses will require $1 of investment. Now, if that child does not go blind, gets the education, and enters the workforce, he or she has potential to earn $100,000 in the 30 years lifespan in Indian rupees. So we can see an exponential power of prevention where $1 results into $100,000. And additionally, there is no burden to the society in terms of person going blind and taking care of them. Now here is a visit we had to Shihor in Gujarat 
where eye doctor is examining the school children to check out for their eyesight specifically vitamin a and any other issues afflicting the students now we were at uh, ushakiran eye hospital in mysore where eye doctor nurses and uh, <clears throat> uh, the founder of the ushakiran eye hospital dr ravi shankar we went out to the uh primary and secondary school uh try to get the complete check up of the entire school run by the government and it so happens for a given school between 2 to 5% of the children have some difficulties with their eyesight so what happens is when they cannot see anything on the white board or a black board they withdraw from the school now this is a tremendous loss to them to the family and to the society so our goal is to send the medical partners to do the screening child projects one district at a time and each district cover the schools and in state of karnataka this effort is going on on a big basis uh and the eye doctors provide the necessary intervention in terms of giving eye drops sometimes uh, children may need eye glasses some may need vitamin a and in rare cases they may need uh, cataract removal so this is the major effort to focus on prevention of blindness which is critical because once a person is blind then there is very little you can do but if you can prevent the blindness that's much better now i want to take you to the second aspect which is due to age related issue people get cataract in their eyes and to remove a cataract in india with the help from the government and our support it's only 20 dollars per eye sight uh, per cataract per eye versus 4000 dollars here in the united states so this is a multiplier of 200 another exponential power of cure is not only the multiplier of 200 but the person whose cataracts are removed they can see for themselves take care of them personally and also become useful to the family and to the society so the quality of life improves and incidentally 80% of the blindness in india is either preventable or curable all we need is to mobilize some resources now here is an example of a a person who underwent cataract surgery which is a simple 10 minutes operation and after the operation patient has to stay overnight in the hospital and then next day morning there is a post operative check up and patient is taken back to the villages where they come from and on the van we have given uh, to the medical partners now here is a uh, location in vrindavan ramakrishna mission we are visiting uh, the people are gathered near the mobile van we have given and uh, they are distributing uh, some eye related uh, intervention eye drops etc for people who needed it after the initial screening and check up now this is the van recently sent to ram krishna mission in khetri in rajasthan uh, for continuing to do i care work another one in dehradun where there is a major focus on prevention of blindness through child sight projects i want to uh, show you a great example what happens to a person uh so you look at the picture on the left uh the girl has a squint eye 
Now, when a corrective surgery is performed, result is on the right side. And when this surgery is done and squint is removed, the person's outlook on life changes and person is happy to live rest of the life and be a very useful citizen. Now, uh, let me share with you a little bit about the organization. We started Blind Foundation for India in 1989. It is a charitable organization in the United States. We have six directors, 60 members on the board of advisors, and 300 key volunteers throughout the United States. As I come from the quality discipline, we have kept our organization very lean and simple, and real focus is on taking the action. So bias for action, that is our focus. Set up for Blind Foundation for India, we started working with about 50 plus NGOs in India. And currently we have scaled it back to about 25 of them. Most of them are Ramakrishna missions throughout India. We have an overseas coordinator, Mr. Kishore Shah. He is in Rajkot, Gujarat. He is 90 years old and he spends about 60 to 70 hours a week to coordinate these activities sitting at his place in Rajkot. We also have a field officer in Rajkot and the NGOs who are funded from our side need to provide a report on the utilization of the van, how many kilometers the van has run, how many eye camps were done, and how many people got benefited through the use of the van we have given to them. Also, NGOs are required to submit the report for cataract operations and child site projects. And we really believe that the accountability should be there that when an NGO receives the fund, they need to provide appropriate feedback so that the donors know what happened to their hard-earned money. Now, let me talk about the BFI impact so far. Since 1989, we have raised over 4 million US dollar. We have performed 150,000 free cataract operations. So far, we have examined over 1 million people for their eyesight. And the best part is in the prevention, where we have examined 750,000 children, uh, provided the glasses, vaccinated against measles, and provided vitamin A as needed. We also gave 10,000 braille kits to blind children to study with the sighted children. Donated 115 mobile ones in 18 states of India. And in terms of collaboration, working with Rotary Foundation, we have done 15 major projects with the matching of one to three. And Rotary had supported us up to the tune of $500,000. And currently, project is underway to work with the Lions and that they have a site first program and we'll be working on sending a proposal to them and uh, to start a project in India. Now, uh, here is a letter from former President uh, Bill Clinton. During his White House years, uh, he had an eye doctor, Dr. Sushil Jain. And through Dr. Sushil Jain, we sent a simple letter explaining uh, the projects we are doing to support uh, blind people in India. And President Clinton was gracious enough to send us a letter. Now, in terms of the recognition for BFI, uh, there is a Points of Light Foundation in Washington, D.C. They recognize the effort we were doing for the organization. Uh, Daily Point of Light Award was given to BFI on 1st of June, 2004. 
recently the Chicago Public Radio, WBZ 91.5 FM, there was a interview on Blind Foundation for India work and the podcast uh, is created and that link is provided. And uh, US Department of Commerce, which manages National Institute for Science and Technology, recently put together a blog on 30th of July on how a charity is using Baldrige to serve the blind. And uh, that blog is also shown here with the link. Now, there are various ways people can help Blind Foundation for India. So I want to share with you ways to help Blind Foundation for India. So when you do any online shopping on using Amazon.com, Amazon provides 0.5% of the purchases back to the Blind Foundation for India. And uh, a link is provided. If you use that link, whatever purchases you make, 0.5% of your purchases will come back to the foundation to help blind in India. Uh, well, we have a website which you can share with your friends and family members to show the real plight of blinds throughout India. On April 13, 2013, I was invited to give a talk at TEDx at IIT Chicago, my alma mater here. And the topic was exponential power of the gift of giving. That is on the Blind Foundation for India. And then the last item is a short 33 second YouTube, which you can share with your friends and family uh, to get the idea about what the Blind Foundation is doing to help blind people in India. I want to share with you some of the inspiring quotes from the great leaders from around the world. So when we look at Mahatma Gandhi, he told us that you must be the change you wish to see in the world. So we need to come together and look at what we can do to help our blind brothers and sisters in India. Uh, well, this is the quote from a person named Athene the Grele. He was the 18th century French-American mis Quaker missionary. What he tells us is, I shall pass through this world but once. Any good thing, therefore, that I do, or any kindness that I can show to any human being, let me do it now. Let me not defer it or neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. Very powerful statement in terms of giving back to the society because God has sent us with a mission to help others. And if we can do that during our lifetime, uh, we will be leaving a positive legacy for other people. And if you look at the quote from Swami Vivekananda, is telling us the life is short, the vanities of the world are transient, but they alone leave, leave for others, and the rest are more dead than alive. Now, uh, I want to conclude this part of the healthcare best practice with the uh, Sanskrit uh, quote, Tamsoma Jyotir Gamaya. God kindly lead us from darkness to light. With that, I want to thank all of you for attending today's session on the video call and appreciate your patience and interest in understanding practice in the healthcare. Thank you very much.